Hey everyone, over the course of today's video, I'm going to cover everything you should know before visiting one of America's most iconic estates, the Biltmore House. I must confess, North Carolina is not the first place I would have guessed to be home to one of the most jaw-dropping European-inspired estates in the United States. But here we are, and I'm excited to share some of the highlights from that visit with you. First, let's start with a little bit of background about the Biltmore House. The Biltmore House was constructed in 1895 by railroad tycoon George Vanderbilt. The home is the centerpiece to an 8,000 acre estate with large garden displays, hotels, a winery, shopping, dining, walking paths, and more. The Biltmore House and estate are located in the southern area of Asheville, North Carolina. If you're coming from out of state, the best way to get into Asheville is via the regional airport that services flights from many major cities. The nearest surrounding major cities are Charlotte, Charlotte and Knoxville, which Asheville sits between. Charlotte is to the east while Knoxville sits to the west, and either city is about two hours away by car. Now let's get into what to expect during your actual visit to the Biltmore. Visitors of the Biltmore House should expect a somewhat lengthy drive through the property grounds. It's during this drive that you start to realize the scale of the estate and the massive undertaking required to maintain the property. I'd also like to highlight that the Biltmore House is a different building than the Biltmore Hotel, and that the two buildings are located on different parts of the estate property. As you drive back towards the Biltmore House, you will pass the Biltmore Hotel and other estate facilities. While you can't stay in the actual Biltmore House at this time, the hotel is a great option for out-of-town guests looking for a more immersive Biltmore experience. After a scenic drive through the estate, you'll eventually come to the parking area that serves the Biltmore House. Once you've parked your car, you can either walk to the house or catch one of the shuttles that make frequent stops from the parking lot. As you approach the house, you'll walk along the massive courtyard and fountain areas that lead up to the entrance. Once you make it to the entrance area, you'll be instructed to present your tickets, be educated on house rules, and given the lowdown on how to use your audio tour device. Guided tours are an option as well if that's more your style. But regardless of whether you choose a tour by yourself or with a guide, you need to make reservations and secure tickets in advance. I've included links to help you do that in the video description, so be sure to take a look when you're done watching. Upon entering the house, you'll quickly understand why it attracts so many visitors each year. Every inch of the interior is lavishly decorated with works of art, photographs highlighting the property's history, and ornate furniture one would typically expect to see in a European castle. Not only is the estate immaculately decorated, you'll quickly realize the Biltmore was built to operate more like a resort than a home. There's literally a room for every imaginable purpose on the property, including a banquet hall, a salon, a bowling alley, underground pool, a library, and a large number of guest rooms, and so much more. Photos and video bear do the immense scale of the Biltmore House justice. It's something you just have to experience firsthand to truly appreciate. Be sure to budget at least 90 minutes to explore the Biltmore House. If you plan on listening to the majority of the audio tour and really taking in the ambiance, you could easily spend north of two hours touring the house. Budget additional time if you plan to stop for food, coffee, or to browse the shops located adjacent to the Biltmore House in the Stables area after completing your tour. And be mindful that a complimentary wine tasting at the Biltmore Winery is included with your Biltmore ticket as well. If you plan on taking advantage of this free perk, you'll need to make an additional reservation at the winery and as a heads up, the winery is located in a different area of the estate property, so leave plenty of time to get from one area to the next. I'll include a separate link in the video description to help you secure a reservation at the winery. And for any photographers watching, you are allowed to take photos inside of the Biltmore House, but flash photography is not permitted. Most of the Biltmore House is dimly lit to better preserve the home's contents. While you can take photographs during your visit, the lighting is less than ideal in most rooms. On the food front, there are casual restaurants located just outside the Biltmore House in the stable area. These are great options for anyone not staying in the Biltmore Hotel. For guests staying at the hotel in the Antler Hill Village area, there are more formal dining options available. You can still eat at the restaurants near the hotel even if you aren't staying on the property. Now let's discuss the best time of the year to visit the Biltmore House. The Biltmore experience you get is going to vary widely based on the time of year that you visit. During the winter months, visitors can expect an extravagant Christmas display throughout the grounds, while a visit during the fall will offer excellent conditions for those more into leaf peeping. Or or you can consider a visit during the spring when the estate gardens are in full bloom. The Biltmore House also boasts different events such as live music or art exhibits that vary throughout the year. I'd recommend planning your visit well in advance to align with the season or event that interests you the most. And for the avoidance of the doubt, you cannot stay in the actual Biltmore House. However, there are a number of lodging options available throughout the estate that cater to different budgets. The Village Hotel at Biltmore Estate is geared towards budget-conscious travelers, although I wouldn't use the word cheap 
cheap to describe the cost or accommodations there. The inn is considered a higher end lodging option while those really looking to splurge on luxury should explore the cottages at Biltmore. I'll include a link to the different lodging options as well as some options in the surrounding area in the video description below. While an overnight stay includes gate access to the Biltmore estate, my understanding is that it does not include free access to the Biltmore house and you will need a separate ticket and reservation. So keep that in mind if you're staying on the actual property. Hopefully you find this guide covering things to know before visiting the Biltmore helpful during your trip planning process. Feel free to reach out on social media or drop a comment below if you have any specific questions that went unanswered in this video. Don't forget to check out some of my other trip planning resources like how to save on airfare or my blog post covering a visit to the Biltmore while you're at it. I've included links to those and more in the video description below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future travel guides that I publish to the channel. I'm Wes Murgard with Work Remotely, liveremotely.com, and thanks for watching.